Okay, hi. So, if I look like I've been already doing yoga, uh, the answer is I kind of have doing the setup for this video. So, I couldn't really think of anything I wanted to do in particular. I had a lot of ideas on my plate and my eyes are sweaty. Oh my God, this is hard to stare at a camera right now. Uh, so what I decided to do was, you know, I've talked a lot about being a yoga teacher. So why not just go ahead and show all my yoga equipment? Uh, this list is not going to be exhaustive. It will be exhausting because I'm already sweating. Uh, first things first though, thank you to Naomi Gold of the Detroit Yoga Lab. This is technically my home studio, what I like to consider my home studio. This is where I did my 200 hour YTR and vinyasa. Uh, long story short is this is where I started. Naomi Gold offers a lot of just awesome, awesome trainings, workshops, and makes them available and accessible to people who otherwise wouldn't be able to afford them. Me included, when I did my yoga teacher training, I was working two jobs, losing my gosh dang mind. I had to drive from Ann Arbor to Detroit. I used up whatever credit I had left on my credit cards to be able to afford my training. I really couldn't afford my training in all honesty. And without Naomi, it wouldn't have been possible. So thank you, Naomi. Naomi Gold is a direct student of Jason Crandall, uh, one of a very renowned yoga teacher in Vinyasa these days. His wife, Andrea Ferretti, is and was an editor at Yoga Journal. She now runs the Yoga Land podcast, which you can find on Apple Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and you know, wherever you do get your podcasts. I was using Yoga Land during my yoga teacher training after it had just sort of launched. There was about like around like 20 or 30, 40 episodes, somewhere in that range, but enough to really not only complement my training with Naomi Gold. This is my original yoga teacher training manual. Uh, really nice. It goes through all the poses, it provides you lists and pictures and everything. Today we're just gonna go over some of the tools I've uh, acquired throughout my yoga teacher training and my yoga journey as a student of yoga. Yoga is awesome. <laughs> I highly recommend it. I think it's good for everybody. It's accessible. Uh, you can make it accessible for disabled people. You can make it accessible for people with medical issues. You can make it accessible to people who are new at it, to people who are advanced at it, to people who are gymnasts. You can, yoga is really whatever you want it to be. I am trained specifically in vinyasa, yin yoga, aqua yoga, restorative yoga, and I mean that with a capital R as in Judith Hanson Lassiter and Lizzie Lassiter restorative yoga of the Iyengar line. I really want an Iyengar certification and training. Oh, I'm an old man. I love it. As well as I've taken some online courses in prenatal yoga and children's yoga, just because I don't necessarily want to do that kind of yoga and teach that kind of yoga, but it is good to you know, learn about it, study it, help those people who will show up to your classes. And we were all children once. So what better way to learn about and how to do yoga than to, you know, learn about it from the perspective of a child, which you used to be and honestly still are. So first things first, we got my yoga teacher manual out of the way. This is really a nice, very wonderful tool and resource, which I'm glad I still have because it not only provides pictures, descriptions, and very clear, concise cues or prompts for how to move from one position to the next, but it also gives you the English name of the pose as well as the Sanskrit name of the po position and pose or the asana. So love this, glad I have it, very nice, flexible. Uh, sorry, this is one of a kind, one of edition. <laughs> very few people have this and I'm one of them. Next up we have, this is the Mark Stevens yoga sequencing deck. It's just got a nice bunch of cards to, you know, you want to do a pose, pull a pose out, like do a tarot fortune card game and just find a bunch of these cards, do whatever poses, practice and design a flow based on and around these poses that you pull from these cards. Simple enough. It's very nice, very short, very concise little random tool that I think just really adds to my practice as well as my ability to, you know, have fun and mix things up. Yoga blankets can be used in a variety of ways. You can use these as support. You can use these for meditation sitting. You can use these in restorative, which these are a big part of restorative yoga, alongside yoga bolsters, sandbags, and yoga blocks. 
these are for the sake of providing weight and pressure while also providing something flexible and movable and very adjustable. The cool part about blankets is they are strong. These are falsa blankets specifically. You can get these in Mexico for like five dollars. Like you can get these online. Online in America, these things go for like 20 bucks a pop. In Mexico, you can get these for five bucks. So that's what I found out. I've never been to Mexico. Would love to go. I hear it's great, honestly. Uh, you do need a lot of these though if you want to do restorative yoga. Uh, at base minimum for restorative yoga, you do need two bolsters, two to four blocks, five blankets. I have right here uh, a little eye bag that was scented with lavender when I first got it for when you just want to put it over your eyes. Restorative yoga is a non-exercise based kind of yoga. It's meant and designed to prop your body up with bolsters, pillows, and blocks uh, and support the body in order to make muscles relax so that you are forced to relax. Like you are so supported and so comfortable that no matter what you are, may, maybe no matter who you are, you are able to find and engage the parasympathetic nervous system and start to go out of fight, flight, or freeze into relaxation. It is absolutely wonderful. It lowers the acidity of the blood. It helps heal trauma. It helps open up your body and just gives you deeper sleep. Uh, I found a lot of ways to incorporate restorative yoga into my yoga practice outside of the mat, which we'll get into later, but I wanna keep moving. Yoga wheel, nice little tool. It's a fun little exercise uh, balancing a piece of equipment. So you can do a lot with this. You can put pressure on it. You can use it as an object of intention and focus. So one thing that I like to do and to bring into my practice is engagement. So the point of a yoga pose is not to just, if it's, let's say, a warrior two or a warrior one, you're not just using your legs, you're using your head, you're using your arms, you're using your back. You're engaging key and core muscles, sure, but I walk with my entire body. I do not just walk with my legs, I walk with my head, I walk with my arms, I walk with my chest, because I am not my, I am never not my body. I am never not my body. My body and I are one and the same. This body is me, as much as, as much as you can say, but you're not your arm, you're not your leg, yeah, sure, but whose arm and leg is that? Where did that arm and leg come from? This arm and leg are a part of me. That was dangerous. <laughs> and depending on how I use and move them really does determine and say a lot about who I am. What investment I put in, how comfortable I am as a person, whether I'm relaxed or not, uh, whether I'm hurt or not, what happens to this body happens to me. So keep that in mind as you go forward. Yoga really does teach you a lot about not only who you are and how you interact with things and respond to things, but it teaches you to incorporate all of yourself into the smallest minute details of what you're doing. This sort of, these sort of tools, these are great for, you know, bringing an opposition of sorts, an opposition. And I don't mean that in terms of damage or harm, I mean that in sort of you have to really vary up the way that you do things. You cannot just go through the practice the way that you've been taught or the way that you think you should. You have to respond to this tool. You have to learn to engage your body via the medium of this tool. Just doing it alone on a mat does a lot more different things than just do, than doing this with the wheel, right? If I move my arms freely, I don't have to worry about moving my arms while holding a wheel, suddenly I have to focus and intend for a lot more different things. I have to plan out, I have to think about what I'm doing now that this wheel has been attached to my body. It determines and sort of interacts with and revitalizes, reinvigorates, changes, uh, reforms and reshapes the habits that I've put into my body by moving it. I'm choosing to acquire and entertain new habits in my body. Yoga wheel. Really fun, really cool. Uh, it's it's very gymnastics-y. Yoga can get very gymnastics-y and very dancey if you're not careful. There are some personal beliefs I have about yoga, but yoga is very adaptable. Uh, I do believe yoga is more than anything healing and restorative, apart from you know restorative yoga with a capital R. 
It is meant to teach you how to use and engage with your own body with less damage, more intentionality, and more clarity and focus. Speaking of, sorry, I needed that for me. I'm really sweaty. Uh, this is an F note, by the way. This is my crystal singing bowl. quartz crystal. It's around $200. It's very pricey, but if you've ever done sound therapy or sound bathing, it does really just help focus, clarify, make you become present in the moment with a single clear, beautiful tone and note. There's one for each note representing each chakra. This is the F note for the heart chakra. This one, I don't know what note this is, but it is different and the tone is different because the material is different. See, it's much higher. Uh, it's much dingier. Uh, I recommend this one for smaller stu studio spaces. I tried to bring this into my, my, my yoga classes when I was teaching yoga before the pandemic. The students, the, I had older students, but the studio space was also much smaller than where I was doing yoga, which was a much larger room to accommodate like 50 people or so. I believe it might be more than that. My yoga studio space could accommodate like 30 people. This one's really nice. It does fill the room, believe it or not. It is very useful and very helpful. And compared to this one, my students weren't covering their ears during Shavasana when I was trying to help them relax and calm down. More so, so this mat right here, this is a grounding mat. Uh, this one isn't a tool necessarily for doing yoga. This is more so the larger holistic lifestyle of yoga. So what this does is you plug it into an outlet. It's got a grounding cable that goes into the, the grounding piece of any outlet. Some outlets don't come with grounding inputs or ports, but if you can find one, you plug this into the wall and it helps just pull electricity from your body because physics is a thing. Electricity does ground itself, like when a lightning strike strikes the ground. This is sort of a similar process. It helps with anxiety. You do feel a noticeable a difference, at least I do, and some of the people that I've exposed this to do. Not everyone does, uh, but also I'm full of anxiety and a lot of energy and stimulation. So it probably, if you don't really feel a lot of stimulation and you're not a really high energy person, this might not do anything for you, but it does, you know, in terms of electrical impulses, help pull excess electricity from your body. You can get a grounding blanket, which I'm saving up my money for as soon as when it, I don't save my money. I just spend recklessly and live in the moment. It's fine. Um, when I have funds that I feel I can appropriately make a purchase, which might seem a little bit extraneous, but might also help me sleep because this has helped me sleep. Oh, this has helped me sleep. Speaking of sleep, sandbag. So this is a yoga sandbag. You can put this on different parts of your body, like your feet to help hold your poses. Uh, one thing that I like to do is I like to lay in Shavasana or corpse pose, put it on my stomach as my yoga teacher, Naomi Gold does, and it helps lengthen the spine, it helps calm some energy down, helps you still yourself out. This is the most wonderful feeling in the world, especially if you're high energy, especially if you have a lot of lower back tension. Um, I'll show you right now very quickly, but one of the things that I like to do and that I learned in my yoga teacher trainings, so this is about 10-15 pounds, you fill it up with sand that you can get at any store, and rather than keep my legs like this, oh, that's already starting to feel it good. I'm not gonna lay them down personally because I can get a lot more engagement and activation this way in a way that I desire. And I take my knees, I rest them against one another and let my feet come out so that my, my legs are supporting one another. 
And I'm actually getting, oh, my spine just popped a little bit. That's beautiful. Uh, but I can get some nice rest and relaxation here. And I don't have to engage muscles to hold my legs up because my legs are supporting one another. They're collapsing in on one another. You can use your body's, oh gosh, I'm itchy from all the sweat. You can use your body's own gravity to its advantage, and that's kind of what yoga is meant to do. It is helping you learn how to channel gravity through your body, because gravity is a constant force coming down on you. You are standing up resisting against gravity. Yoga and things like dance, meditation, chai chi, tai chi, those all do help you, you know, learn how to channel the forces of gravity and physical energies, kinetic and potential forces through your body appropriately, with timing, with intentionality, with control. Yoga is not the only physical discipline I'm engaged in, and the one, not the only one I would like to get back to. I do a lot of things outside of yoga, which we're going to get into. Uh, that's what all this stuff is. I do have some more yoga teacher tools that I just want to go through really quick. Yoga teacher strap. Yoga is a word for yoking the body. It is a learning about how to put the body between two or more opposing tensions and being able to find the space of engagement, ease, intentionality, and effectiveness or affect between those things. So like this, loose, nothing, taut. You can do poses, you can do arm raises, you can do lat pulls. By engaging the body this way and having it hold and maintain a force constantly on something, you are engaging different parts of the body while also remaining more focused, right? It's sort of like with crystals. Um, a lot of people do enjoy crystals. I, I think crystals are great. I think they have a lot of meaning and spirituality behind them. They're not going to cure your cancer. I don't believe that. Go to a doctor if you can afford it. Jesus. Do some restorative yoga to help you, you know, engage the parasympathetic nervous system and heal your body. But it's a sort of meditation point, right? It's causing you to focus and be, as Gandhi said, one-pointed. Gandhi was a Hindi, he was a yoga practitioner, he was a yogi. He read the Bhagavad Gita daily, a specific passage, which I forget. Uh, Gandhi, I think the interpretation of his, Gandhi's interpretation of the Bhagavad Gita is always important to learn about. Gandhi is a very important historic figure and yoga practitioner. Yogini? Yogi? Yogi? Yogi is the male term. The whole point of his idea of yoga was one-pointedness and uh, effervescence or effulgence, a brightening through a simple, clear, distilled direction. You know what I mean? Binding the self, yoking and whittling down things to the point of absolute necessity to find that true, true presence. We're getting a little bit uh, woo-woo here. I love the woo-woo. Yoga blocks, great for support, great for helping you balance, helping you if you're not good standing on one leg, put this under the floating leg, or the leg trying to stay in the air, rather, and help support your poses. Look at that. I'm using my yoga block. This is a yoga pose, I'm using my yoga block. Look at that. Using my yoga block, this is a yoga pose. Lots of different ways that you can do this. Lots of different ways that you can do this. It's not just about putting force on. Maybe it adds resistance. Maybe it adds weight. Maybe it adds um, fun. You know what I mean? There's lots of different ways you can incorporate things into yoga. And they don't necessarily just have to be about posture or movement. They can just be about, you know, exploring your body, entertaining it. Uh, as much as I say I don't like yoga to be dance, yoga originally was a military, there's bees out here, military exercise. And it started off from a place of violence and training and physicality. It can be 
looked at from a point of play, it can be looked at from a point of meditation. There are different branches and styles of yoga because there is a yoga for everybody. Everybody can do yoga and y yoga is for everybody. I forgot my yoga chair, it's inside, it's where chairs belong. <laughs> Uh, I do want to get trained in chair yoga. That is one of my goals. Things that I have. Uh, yoga therapy balls. So these little guys, I really like to put them under my feet and just roll. I like to put the pressure on things. They help loosen up your muscles. Uh, untied, outside of that, as a yoga teacher, every yoga teacher needs multiple mats. I don't care who you are, you need multiple mats. This is my Lululemon mat. I got it for $25 cheap. Here's another Quark Yoga mat. Don't remember where I got that one. It's from on, offline. This one is the mat that I'm sitting on right here uh, with the great label. Uh, I believe it was made in Hawaii. If you've read anything in the news, donate to Maui, please. The ecological destruction and the destruction of the Hawaiian people's cultures, honestly terrible. And as a mainlander, <laughs> I am so sorry of what American culture has done to the indigenous people and the indigene of Hawaii. That's just some of the most natural untouched bits and pieces of nature are on Hawaii and now they've been horribly and utterly destroyed by fires, by, by terrible, terrible wildfires, which may or may not have been preventable. Maybe it was just, you know, shit waiting to hit the fan, but I personally, as an American, feel responsible for that, and uh, donate to it if you can. I'll put a donation link in the description below. Yeah, so. So this is a cork yoga mat. This one cost me $120. Uh, yoga is expensive. A yoga teacher training certification is market value $3,000 for a 200-hour teacher training, and that's just for the 200-hour. There's the 300 hour, there's the 500 hour, there's a 10,000 hour. You can get involved in yoga. There's yoga therapy, there's Iyengar, there's, there is a lot to do with yoga, but it is an investment. It is a lot of buying in in order to see it paying off. So heads up, I wouldn't necessarily call it a wealthy elite sort of thing, but I would say it does consume your life and it consumes your resources, your attention, and your focus if you really want to see the real and true benefits in it in order to get them out of it. Okay, so other things, uh, a, my massage gun, I just think that's a nice thing to have as a physical practitioner, a big cyclist, water camel pack, wa water camel back backpack, my other yoga balls, um, these are, I wouldn't know what to call these. It's similar to a lacrosse ball, and I've been told lacrosse balls are a little bit denser than this and can do the same thing, but it's a nice version where these, is, these are pure quirk. These are really hard and tough. These have give. These have give to massage the muscles. So it's like muscles have give, these yoga therapy balls have give. Uh, my boxing gloves, my Tai Chi band. These are my personal own, you know, other physical practices that I like to try and engage in with my yoga, just to bring something new in, bring play in, you know, bring bring what you want into it. You can get anything you out, anything you want out of yoga, but it depends all on what you want to put in, what you feel comfortable putting in, and what you really enjoy doing so. And my jump rope. I think a jump rope is just a nice universal tool for anyone who wants to do more cardio. And my self defense bat. Uh, I do like to train. I do like to uh, make sure I am able to protect myself. I'm not a violent person. I'm a sweaty person. I also know that I'm a smaller man. Um, and I grew up in a majority black school community. So it's not as if I didn't see fighting. It's not as if I didn't know kids involved in gang violence. It's not as if I didn't have a classmate of mine personally from my graduating class get shot up and die when I was 15 and he was 15. And from what I was told, we we knew each other from, you know, all the way back in elementary school. I think he was in my second grade class. Yeah, so uh, 
We live in a violent world. It's always nice to know how to protect yourself and defend yourself. Not because you're looking for fights, looking to pick fights, but you are aware that violence can happen to anyone. Learning how to utilize, use your body, make sure that it is able to not only protect itself, heal itself, defend itself, but that it can engage so in a way that is done so with ten intentionality. And more than anything, when the time comes, if it ever does, that it's been practiced, that it is not going to just throw itself around wildly and do more damage to both itself and people that it does not want to necessarily cause that harm to or bring that energy to. And I believe that is it so far. Okay. One thing that I would like to say before, uh, I am going to attach a yoga video to this. I feel like I've been slacking on my content a little bit. I feel like I could, you know, be giving my audience a little bit more consistency and I haven't really been able to do that. And I don't feel I've delivered on a lot of the promises that I've wanted to as a content creator. So I'm going to attach a yoga flow to this. If you're wanting, willing, and itching to see my yoga teaching skills in action, stick around. This will be my first ever yoga teaching video. I hope you enjoy. It's going to be simple. We're going to do some sun salutation A's, Jason Crandall style, as I've learned to do and engage them. Be patient. This is my first time teaching a yoga class in a very long time. And considering that I have more things to consider like filmography, audio, video quality, We'll see how it goes, okay? All right. <laughs> Namaste. All right. Get some water. <laughs> 